boom, <laughs> up there is the moon. And actually, it's super. Uh, the, 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 even with this camera, uh, when it realizes the focus is in infinity, uh, yeah, you see Castor and Pollux off to the uh, left of the moon there. That's how it actually focuses. That focus? There we go. So the two stars to the left of the moon is Gemini, it's Castor and Pollux. And that's Procyon down there. Yeah, nice camera on this thing. Right, so uh, the EV scope said it was going to save you so much time because aligning telescopes was such hard work and so difficult to do. So I'm just going to show you how difficult it is to align a little telescope like this on the moon and get it tracking. So the first thing you have to do is unlock your clutches here. So it's the telescope moves freely that way. And I need to unlock that one so it moves freely that way. And now we want to point at the moon. And then a few times, and the trickiest bit by far is right. So we're going to line it roughly up with the moon. It's about there somewhere. And now I've got to get the camera to look through the finder. Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, that's beautiful. And there's the moon. Boom! All oh, of that is on fire. All right, good. So, now that we've done that, I'm just going to lock up that clutch. Lock up that clutch there. Yeah, take the cap off the front. And boom, yeah, I can see the telescope is ready to burn your eyeball out on the moon. And... Yeah, man. Oh, there he is. There's the moon. Ooh, beautiful. That's Tycho, the really pronounced crater there. And the focus is pretty decent as well. Beautiful. So, that's how hard it is to find the moon. Now, it's not tracking at the moment, right? So we've got to get it tracking. Um, so this is the bit that the EV scope will do all automatically for you for about $3,000. First thing you do is turn the telescope on. And, uh, right, verifying packages. Uh, right, so the first thing I'm going to do is hit a line. It's going to want the time. Time is 8.15-ish. Don't have to be exact. No, if you want optical. If you want to get it tracking, like, for taking pictures, uh, you need to do this a little more seriously. And the date is right as well. That's nice. Uh, right, a line. Oh, we don't do the three bright stars thing. Right, so I'm going to have to tell it where... It will actually remember where you are on Earth, but I'm going to put all of this data in anyway, just to show you. Right, so in each of my places on Earth, it remembers it from last time, but I'm going to put it all in again anyway. So you just need a nearby city. So I'm just going to scroll through all of this. You'll forgive me if I don't put in my, my actual address on uh, the GPS. Um, boom, boom, boom. Done. Enter. Good. Right. So now... No, we don't do Skyline. There we go. This is what we want. So after this, we want to go to 2 star, 1 star align, solar system align. We go for Enter. Oh, and then it's going to go through all this data again. Okay. Just put Enter a load of times. Oh, and we it's asked me to center up the moon. So at that point, I've got to center up the moon. Now the moon will have actually moved out of the field of view by this time, because it, it, that, that's roughly the sort of time scale that you're looking at for this sort of thing. Oh, there we go, that looks like the field of view. Right, so I've got to track this over to the moon. There we go. And once you've got it roughly in the right place, you push the enter key and then you've got to align it such that you you're enter, you center it up on the middle of the moon. Or, you know, normally you do this with the star, you do it with like three bright stars. Um, uh, middle of the moon. Yeah, that's Capernicus. I guess. Middle of the moon's about there, at which point I hit align and it says...
evolution. Well, I think he's tracking. I think he's. So there's only one way to be certain. And that's it. It's actually got a zoom eyepiece in there at the moment. So. Right, it, it's guaranteed to be successful if you're doing a one star align. Uh, oh, that zoomed all the way in. Let's zoom all the way out. Oh, there you go, beautiful. A bit of dirt on the eyepiece, but... Good. So, that's how long the um, the one-star align stuff takes. Um, yeah, that is tracking now. And it'll stay like that for... <laughs> I mean, for visual tracking, this is fine. If I was doing photography where you want to sort of take pictures of things where the telescope's got a point like you know almost perfectly in the right position for you know extended periods of time i would probably uh do a three star line with a three star line you've only got to point it at three bright objects you don't actually have to know what they are um and yeah the telescope does the calculations for us there aren't actually that many bright stars to to align on so yeah, and usually when you're doing the, the, the three bright bright star aligned stuff, uh, you would choose, yeah, you want stars separated a long way that way. And, you know, you, you don't want, the closer the stars are together, uh, the worse your, your alignment's going to be. Uh, so, how's this guy going down with the tracking? So, he's, he's actually doing okay. Uh so you'll see what I mean. Uh, that what I'm going to do is I am going to turn the tracking off on the telescope like that. I'm just going to turn the whole telescope off, and you'll see how quickly the moon actually moves out of the field of view. So this, bear in mind, is just the Earth rotating, right? And Okay, you see it's moving relative in this frame. It's going up and slightly to the left. So that's actually the Earth rotating. Um, cool. Let's do a bit of focus on that. Yeah. So that's uh, how quickly the Earth rotates. So I'm going to zoom in a bit on the moon, as so long as we can. Yeah, it messes a bit with the eye relief, doesn't it? There we go. Cool. And you'll see, it, yeah, so it just keeps drifting out in the same way. So, the moon is about a quarter of a million miles away, which, give or take, is... Uh, if, you, if you've got a car that does good mileage in its lifetime, that's roughly uh, how far a car will drive. So, you see, it, it drifts out at a fair old pace. Uh, well, at the moment, yeah, well, everything, the moon, the stars, everything's sort of going that way, which means the Earth's actually spinning that direction. Uh... You know, so you, you, if you've got a, a non-tracking mount, oh, is he gone already? Yeah, looks like he's out of the field of view already. Uh, if we go down to low power, we might get it back. Uh, okay, I've, I've kind of lost it. Anyway, so uh, in total, that video took uh, oh, ten minutes or something. Uh, and my reckoning was to get the whole thing tracking takes two or three minutes, maybe. Um, certainly not, you know, a killer feature on a mount. And yeah, if you wanted to set it up for photography, uh, my reckoning would be you know, five minutes, maybe. Um, and also, this thing will. Um, 
it's got this thing where it'll sync up with the smartphone, which I, I updated the firmware on it, and the mount, it, it seems to work much better now. But if you do that, then it gets the time and location data from the phone, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah, that's one of the things that all the, all these new smart mounts do is they, they get all your tracking data, um, all your position and time data from the phone. Cool. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up and uh, see you next time.